stand and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Okay, we have um, honor the art badge, our art banner winners. So, so um, if each of the principals could please go through and I know, um, just as with so many things, those students who were involved in art and were recipients of the Art Banner uh, Awards are also very busy in other summer activities, so we want to recognize that as well, but I think that we have one winner here, so we want to make sure that we um, honor her, but if principals could at least share each of the students' names across the districts that participated and won, a, won an award, I would greatly appreciate it. So, Jason, if you could start. Yes, our uh, award winners for Columbia were Marley and Amelia Bainey. They were both uh, winners in the uh, overall banner contest. And then um, we had the kindergarten finalists, uh, Sarah Rich Creek and Harlow Heidi, and first grade finalists, Tanner Jones and Scarlett Shally. So very proud of them, uh, and they did a fantastic job. So very, very proud. Mr. Bernanke was unable to be here this evening, but he shared that Ireland Shally from second grade was also an art banner winner. So I want to congratulate her as well. Mrs. Murphy? We have Mackenzie Whitman here tonight. She won our seventh grade um, art banner award, so congratulations to her. It is up in uh, somewhere on Main Street, right? It's on Main Street. Yeah. It looks great, so congrats. See you, stand up, honey. <laughs> Jackson, and she won a Judge's Choice Award, and she couldn't be here tonight. So. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hollis? Uh, we had a senior, Katya Adrianova. I thought I was never going to have to say that last name again. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got me one more time. Uh, Hayden Turner Joe, Molly Leslie, Emma Vollmer, and uh, Megan Kreft. And I, the other four, besides Katya, I think Katya is working, the other four really wanted to be here, but they had prior commitments with family. So but they really appreciate the fact that you were going to recognize them. Thank you. And a big thanks to our art teachers as well. And they put a lot of time into those, uh, preparing those, and they, they do a really good job of representing the corporation very well. So. And we probably would be remiss if we didn't mention the silence, <clears throat> yeah. since I know somebody uh, <laughs> <laughs> might be in charge of the uh, art banner things. <laughs> Thank you to all. It's a really good thing to see just driving down Main Street, not just Rochester, you know, not just the Rochester School Corporation kids, but uh, there's some kids, I think, from Caston and even from Mentone that have some banners up there. So it just spruces up downtown and, and gives a little something else to look at. So That's close to your driving. Yep. Just teasing. It's <laughs> as long as it stays between the lines. <laughs> Okay, moving on, we have, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, approval of the um, minutes of the May 20, 2024 regular meeting. Um, Jenny is kind of like our eye in the sky. She seems to know what's going on all the time. Did you have anything to share? All right. And the second one is approval of the minutes from the June 3rd, 2024 regular session. Anybody with questions or concerns? And the third would be the approval of the minutes from the June 3rd, 2024 study session. Anything? Um, at this time, I would, I would accept the motion that we uh, accept that, uh, the minutes as presented. So moved. Thank you, Jenny. Second. Thank you, Casey. All those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries six to zero. Moving on to the funds report. 
Um, we have the education fund at $5,228,145.73. The debt service fund is $1,501,000. $305.97. And in operations, we have $1,783,740.90. That's the year to date expenditures column. Yes. That's not what we have, that's the expenditure. Did I put the wrong one down? Yeah, so the then ones. I was having trouble with my computer today. Shada is here, Katie, if you would uh, like. Yeah. Shada, would you like to just read those? <laughs> I would be happy to do that. Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> Thanks, Stephen. Take it away, Shada. <laughs> Please. I was going to jump up and down, but I thought it might cause a ruckus, so. <laughs> for the education report, our total receipts for the month of May were $1,041,401.19. Our year-to-date receipts are $5,294,200. $39.37. Our month to date expenses are one million three hundred five thousand two hundred and oh see now I need my glasses eighty five hundred and eleven cents. Thanks, Stephen. And that leaves our uh, base I did want to mention we have used about sixty or sorry fifty seven percent, fifty seven point four five four percent of our budget for the year. So I did want to point that out. We're kind of on target. We're halfway through the year. So, um, the debt Excuse service Michelle. fund. So yes, I'm sorry. Is that for the total budget, or is that just an education? No, that's, that's just education. education. Okay. No, that's just education. And on the receipts for our debt service fund it would be ten thousand two hundred thirty-seven dollars and ninety-two cents. Our year to date is forty-six thousand four hundred twenty-seven fifty-two, and our month to date expenses were seventy-two hundred. And that would have been for administrative costs for the bonds. And that one, again, that one's on target because we haven't made any bond payments yet. Those are upcoming uh, July and December. Or June and... June, July. June, July, and December. Thank you. Um, on the operations fund, that one for the month of May, we had receipts of 15... Oh, I didn't finish that one. No, no, I'm sorry, I looked at that wrong. $15,613.73. We did not do any transfers. And our year-to-date receipts are $905,901.57. Our month-to-date expenses were $465,377.74. And our net appropriation, our budget balance for the operating fund is at 65% spent. And then the year-to-date expenditures are one million seven hundred eighty-three thousand seven hundred forty dollars and ninety cents. Any questions for Shada? Uh, Shada, this may be. I, I'm not trying to trap you, and you're new <laughs> ish to the position. That's a significant increase in expenditures in the operations for May. I looked at the vouchers and didn't see anything that stood out. Is there anything that you can think of? Was there an extra payment or anything else that would happen in May? We had an extra pay. We had a three pay month in May. Okay. I looked for that and I only saw two, but we must have approved another one that maybe at the... May 31st was the last uh, pay in May. So we actually had, we did, we had three pays in May. Gotcha. Thank you very much. That's awesome. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so perfect. Thank you. Any other questions? Any questions from the public? Barring no. I will accept a motion for approval of the financial report. So moved. On the whole report, we didn't talk about the funds or the model yet. No funds report. Just the funds report. Fund report. report. Sorry. Just the funds report. <coughs> okay. Mark was second. Second by Mark. Moved by Jenny for the funds report approval. My bad. All in favor, raise your right hand. We have approval of the claims totaling $593,495.44. Any questions, comments, or concerns about the uh, claims? <coughs> no. Or, I'm 
a little, I'm a little befuddled. Thank you. Um, hmm. All right. Next, we have the approval of the payrolls totaling one million thirty-eight thousand two hundred fifty-four dollars and fifty-two cents for two pays, May thirty-first and June fourteenth. Any questions or concerns from the board? If uh, I will accept the motion, then we approve these as read. So moved. Thank I will second. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Stephen. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Sorry, guys. I got a phone call. My daughter-in-law tried to call me twice. I was worried about my farmer out in the field in this weather, and it was that somebody. <laughs> went to an away game and uh, left one of her cleats at home. So <laughs> could grandma bring them? And I said, no, I am not available. But I think she got a hold of grandpa. So we're all <laughs> I'm sorry, but given, our, given his history, I just get a little worked up. That's all. All right. What would you say? Catastrophe averted. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I had just a momentary <laughs> moment. All right. Next, we have the approval for the, <coughs> of the bid for the natatorium, HVAC, and lighting upgrade. Mr. Thornsbury seems very anxious to speak with us. Ready to go? Okay. Thank you. Um, Kenny, I appreciate it. Uh, thank you all for allowing me to be here tonight. Um, so this is for the middle school natatorium, HVAC, and lighting upgrade, basically the complete natatorium renovation uh, is what it turned into. Um, we received four bids. You can see the contractors' names there: Brown and Brown, Hagerman, Gibson Lewis, and Milestone Construction. Uh, Brown and Brown base bid was the low bid at two million seven hundred fifty-six thousand um, dollars. We had three alternates that we that put in the project. Um, alternate one was complete cost to um, add an additional row of seating. Then uh, it's currently there for the <coughs> concrete bleachers. Alternate two was the cost to um, paint the acoustical panels, um, put an additional um, coat of multiple coats of paint on the acoustical panels. And the reason why we did that is because a lot of times the acoustical panels, even though we have them custom color from the factory, they'll come in and we just don't like the coverage. So we wanted uh, a quote to have that cost. If they come in and they look fine, then we'll ask for that money back from the contractor. And we know this number now rather than asking them during construction, which they can say it's five dollars. And um, <laughs> so that's why we did it this way. Then alternate three was um, to allow a second pool equipment contractor to put a package together to bid in competition to what was in the drawings. Um, but unfortunately, they didn't turn in a bid uh, to any of the contractors. So, so with that, the alternate one add of $103,300. Um, what that is, is it, it's, like I said, to add an additional row of seating as compared to what's there now. So adding the top row of seats um, would take our count right now from 147 to 208. So that adds 61 seats to that upper row. It also adds stainless steel railing to make it safer at that top uh, row of seats. So no one would uh, be able to fall through that. Um, so cost per seat is high, but it's because of the nature of what has to be done. The existing concrete bleachers, uh, the wall has to be cut down shortened and then the seats get added to that and then the railing gets added to that so it's multiple things to to do that so 208 seats is is nice because that's one of the first things that Jana brought to our attention was there anything you can do to make more seats in here because currently the seats are those deep concrete basically they look like steps um, and if you sit in them and you were all the way back and use it as a backrest your feet will be dangling in the air because <laughs> they're too deep to sit in so this actually adds bleachers like you would have um, in the um, basketball seating for bleachers there. It's similar. Um, it's plastic. It's contoured or somewhat comfortable compared to the flat ones. Um, so that's the cost for those. And then that painting cost for the additional coats of paint for the uh, Tecton panels or the acoustical panels is 19600 So we didn't make any assumptions to what the board wants to do so i'm here to answer questions regarding those two alternate numbers and then we can decide from there what you want to accept or not accept and um, move forward from there questions 
Terry, was there any sort of analysis? I've been to many swim meets, but never went through and counted how many people were trying to shove themselves into that lovely area. Um, do we have an idea of how many it was seating prior? I haven't been in there during a meet or an event or anything. Jan and I talked about it early on, but I don't know that anybody ever counted because also there's people bring stuff and bags and, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and there's really no seat, it's just free for all. Correct. Now there would be bleachers with seats that would give a little more organization, a little more, um, you know, at least people would have an idea, oh, I'm supposed to sit here and uh, much mm -hmm. like I said, you would in, um, at a basketball event or something. So I don't know uh, the current count. We were trying to get to a high enough number where we could hold more events in there, but we're not high enough uh, for IHSA. So, um, I know it would be a, a great improvement because, from what I have heard, it's packed in there. Yes. So. Very much so. Right. It makes it where people want to be the timers, because then you have a better seat. <laughs> right. This right. may dissuade All some people from wanting the time. Okay. <laughs> so when you say there isn't enough seats to still hold a larger event, uh, the idea of holding like regional, you know, and that type of competition setting here wouldn't be possible because the 208 isn't even enough? Like, what is the minimum for that? Janet, do you know what that number do you was? Know, do you know? I think it's considerably more, isn't it? Yeah, we wouldn't have enough right now as a host of any, for sure. I don't, I don't know that there's an actual number. Right, it, it, um, even when we told Janet what we would be at, she's like, it's not gonna be enough, but it would be an improvement to what's there because um, you have the aluminum bleachers that um, the athletes use, uh, students use, and then the only uh, spectator seating is that side. We, we tried to look at putting seating on the opposite side. It's not wide enough to do anything over there. We are changing the current mechanical room into a storage room so we get some stuff, some clutter off the deck and be able to get it in there and free up a little more walking space. Um, so I think it's, you know, based on what I've been told, like I said, I haven't been in there, but during an event, I've been in there with students and class and other things, and, and still it's, it's quite few, but not for an event, so. So I'll total with options A, if we added option A, it would be 2,856,000, and then if we add option B on top of that, the 19.6, then it'd be 2,875.6 total. Two million. Um, I did not do the math, but I trust that you're... <laughs> I just want to make sure I'm doing that right. The base bid is, is not including A and B. It is not. Correct. Right, because okay. we didn't want to make assumptions, like I said. So that total bid would be updated, and that would be what we would recommend, and then hopefully um, be able to go. And there are contingency funds um, built into the base bid. They are contingency right? funds as well. I think we have 75000 uh, yeah, contingency in the project as well for unknowns. Okay. So... And so we're going to ask that the contractor that's painting the, the panels to make sure they paint them thoroughly so we don't have to come up with the, the other line. Well, they come from the factory that way, so it's out of the contractor's hands. Okay, but excuse me. So they ask, ask the factory to do it. <laughs> sure, job. sure, we will ask. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we have samples of their panels, and that's why we added this in here. Sure. Um, <laughs> because it's, a, it's the same fibrous panel that's in the middle school gymnasium. And those we had painted white with that renovation project, and we had to do multiple layers to make it look good. Uh, it maintains its acoustical properties, but also the additional coats of paint um, make it hold up better to the, the wet, moist environment. So the new HVC will have air conditioning and dehumidification, which that space has never had. So that'll be a big improvement as well. That's good to know. Okay. Yeah. So Casey, I did not do the math. I apologize for that because I didn't know what you what you guys would want to accept. So two nine eight seventy eight by mm -hmm. hundred. That's if we did the well, base with option one and option two. Good for us. Yeah. So, I'm personally going to say that I know it's a high price per seat for the alternate one. However, when you look at a percentage of the total uh, project cost, and then if we're going to, I feel like if you're going to get in there and do it right and shut it down, we should do it right. And that any extra seating we can do that would be feasible, I think, is helpful. Even if it doesn't mean that Rochester can host sectionals or invitationals, 
even for dual meets or a three-way meet, <coughs> it's just really helpful to have that extra seating. If we're charging people to get in there to sit and watch, we want to make sure that they can sit. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's, it. that's very true. I don't want to have to shut the pool and the natatorium down again after doing a locker room renovation, doing this renovation, and then saying, Five years from now, I'm sorry students, I'm sorry staff, I'm sorry coaches and spectators. We need to shut it down again because we have to cut this concrete wall for literally, you know what, $122,000 on a $2.7 million job. I just, yeah, hundred and. Yeah, the wall is only alternate yeah. once. Right, if you add alternate both ones. alternates, I'm sorry, right, yeah. is what I was adding up. But yeah, the 103000 I mean, it's just, Seems like a high risk for this large of a project. It's going to be one of the messiest parts of the project. Salt cutting concrete. Yeah, so cutting concrete is no fun. <laughs> I would move that we accept uh, Brown and Brown to do uh, base bid plus ultimate one and ultimate two for two million eight hundred seventy-eight thousand nine hundred dollars. I would second that. Any questions or comments from the board? Any questions from the gallery? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Terry, before you leave, do you mind giving just a brief update on the roofing project? At sure. Well, I know we just had a meeting on uh, Friday, but if you could just share out in general. Sure. Uh, Morrison Sons Roofing um, has been hard work in the interesting part. We have meetings on. Fridays and we get there and it's like you wouldn't even know they're working but you get on the roof and they're they've got a whole lot done they're just so they're doing a great job making sure the site stays clean it's quiet um, you wouldn't know the replacement roof it's it's impressive um, they're a little over 50% complete but it's because they did one of the largest areas first and now they have smaller areas to work through um, they're on schedule they, they're not seeing any concerns they haven't finished before school starts and like I said we're we're We've been there the last two Fridays. We're skipping this coming Friday, and then we're back um, next Friday, just to stay on top of things. But it looks really good. Um, we have, as we, uh, as they finish sections, we're doing punch list items as they do it, so they can correct those things and keep things moving. So if you go by there right now, you'll see the brick wall of the uh, elevated part of the gymnasium is now blue, um, and that's a waterproofing product that's on the brick. And then there'll be siding that goes over that, and then there'll be a new sign. Uh, for the school in a contrasting black color. So I'm impressed. They're, they're doing a good job like always. And um, no issues. Luke hasn't had any issues at all. So we're good. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you, you all. Any Appreciate questions? it. Yes. All right. What's the timeline on, on the pool for starting? Um, we will get a letter <coughs> sent to them most likely tomorrow. We'll get a contract in place in the next couple of weeks. And I would anticipate they'll start sometime in July. Um, and then they're supposed to be done before school starts in the fall of 25. And you get to pull the plug. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. You're welcome. I know you have a long drive. If you'd like to move on, it won't hurt up here. It's nice out with air conditioners. Thank you. All right. Next on our agenda, item E, is the second reading of the policies. And we have 27 policies, and uh, the the next meeting in July will be when we vote to uh, approve or disapprove those policies. We're we doing that before hey. the panelists. That's one more, more action items. In there. You have the RNS math curriculum. Uh, on the <coughs> okay. Who's down there? Nice shot. I'm dragging. Why am I having a brain dead? No, I don't have it. What is missing? It's right behind you. Oh, I can read it from back here. Oh, yes, I had that for you. Since we have the middle school math curriculum, is Megan here? Okay. No, Megan, Megan uh, is not here this evening, but um, she did share, based on our conversation at the study session, 
Uh, she reached back out to the sales rep and we have a more comprehensive listing of all of the items. So uh, what she shared that evening is correct and is reflected in the documentation that was uh, submitted for the board agenda. Uh, I don't know if I would agree that it's more comprehensive than what was sent to the board agenda unless maybe I'm missing what's there. The one that's sent to the board agenda even has Pat Mellinger as the contact, which is concerning to me since she hasn't worked for us for a very long time. And so if that detail is not correct, what else may not be correct? I very much trust Megan. I just, if we're going to approve a contract, I want to make sure it's the correct contract. Um, they did not have the workbooks listed out. They only still have a quantity of two where they have Alex for 120. So we know that there is a difference in quantity. So with I don't want to stop this from being adopted, but yet I don't want to adopt something that is not, that she just has via verbal from the sales rep. Did they not send, maybe I'm not hearing, is it here? Yeah. Did they not send her anything in email format, Jana? Like they did. She did. I thought you had said that they she was emailing back and forth they with them. They did, but on this, I know that they, the six-year teacher subscription, the six-year, I mean, outlines. Okay. And that was what submitted to the study session, but Mark noticed that at the study session that she had said that the practice books would be one per student, mm -hmm. but on here it says there's two, quantity of two, and then Megan was going to double check that no, it was as she believed, one per student. And I trust her that she did, but that is not what this documentation said. And the sales rep is still referencing Pat Mellinger, which I have no idea why that has not changed. I'm assuming it's probably because Pat started the process. Because remember, this had this was stalled. This right, started. but Pat, Pat was our student, our, I mean, it's probably been six, seven years since oh, Pat's worked here. She just retired two, three years ago. I mean, I think she was down here for a little bit. It's been a while. But, so I'm not sure. Maybe it's been six or seven since she was there. I will say, I know that when we get in touch with textbook companies, like with Matt, they used to always say Lauren Shane, no matter who was contacting them. Like, they don't do a great job of updating I, their records. So I can believe that. I don't, this, this is yeah. in no way a reflection on Correct. Megan or the rest of the team yeah. at all. It's <laughs> that I don't trust them. the text. I, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. one of the emails dated June 17th from the rep says, good morning, here's an updated quote with some items added as notes. If your board is interested, also each line item states six years. Let me know if this helps for your session. Well, the only difference I see dollar-wise difference is the shipping and handling all of a sudden jumped up about a thousand bucks. Okay, make that about thirteen hundred. And still only has two bucks. So not shipping anything more. Yeah, but almost looks yeah. almost looks like they intended to ship and handle all the stuff and they just didn't update any of the rest of the spreadsheet to reflect that. Okay. So Jay, are you recommending that we table this to the next meeting? I hate to, but I don't I don't know what else to do without potentially putting yeah. the board on the hook for something that we don't yeah. we can do it yeah. at the next study, study session. session. Right, Jay. Okay. Okay. I just I don't want to see I don't want the books to come in late because of this. That's the biggest that's thing. That's true. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Maybe you try you to get a call everybody. and we can if you want to try to call her, maybe I get a little question. Does anything on here say <coughs> estimated delivery? I know it talks about the price being firm for. Um, once the PO comes in, it typically arrives 10 to 14 business days. Oh, once the PO comes in, typically 10 to 14 business days for processing, the digital comes on much faster. Yeah, hopefully they would have access to the digital material I, right away. But. Yeah. I just, you know, I wanted to know if the if the workbooks are the practice books are uh, copyable, reprodu re reproducible, whatever would be the correct term, uh, or if they are actually a hard, fast. Here's what you have for each kid. Uh, well, in the way Megan talked, it would be for all six years. Those workbooks would be available for each child. You know, it wasn't necessarily two yeah. for the 
the but teacher, the staff, you know, to rip out and make copies of. It was right. no, yeah. they did add a <coughs> line at the very end of the um, page about of seventh grade at the end. Student bundles are for six years. This includes print and digital. Print will be shipped automatically along with digital. But if their quantity is correct, then that would tell me that it's masters that are sent like mark is referring is it masters right. that then we are paying for reproducible and if that's the case can we build the state for that or is that then something that's going to have to come out of our coffers to yeah. pay for the copy material for that? well i wondered if um i thought megan said nothing would have to be printed at the at the study session i thought that's what she that said was, yeah. I, I believe that was her understanding were you, were you involved in the committees um, if it's like the the current Thing that we have right now, the kiddos have the workbooks. There are two copies of the master um, book Key. for the teachers. So there's two of them, I remember. Um, and each year, we just we would re up and let the company know, hey, we need um, like 110 workbooks for sixth grade or whatever. Nothing had to be you know copied off. It was, they would come in, in boxes, and you know, the math teacher would get them and then give them out. Cassie, do you recall if the math books are they reissue the workbooks? Do they come each year, or do you guys have to teachers have to make copies of those? They come each year. Is it McGraw Hill that we have right now? I'm just going to ask the same thing. <laughs> it's the, the same thing we had at yes. the high school that we got a year ago. Yes, yes it is. Because do you I guys have her. workbooks that are come automatically? Yeah, yeah. I remember her saying that. We were trying to get the middle school in line with the high school, mm -hmm. uh, uh -huh. which is our uses the same. Uh -huh. But I think Jenny's asking, like, what what do they use last school year? Is it McGraw Hill? Uh -huh. I thought it was something yeah. different. It is something different, but I can't because we've gotten away from it because we're two years behind now. I think, I think, it, was, I think it was McGraw Hill still just the old version. It wasn't the reveal map. It was yeah, yeah reveal's the new name. Yes. So it's just McGraw Hill. Is that what it's called? Original. So it was all. So it was the name because it's so far away from. The but we can we can table this now and see if Megan calls sure. back in the next. Sure. Just move it to the other agenda that's coming. Yep. Or we could. I'd entertain a motion that we approve it pending confirmation that the workbooks are included. The hard work workbooks are included for six mm -hmm. years. That's Written. a good point. And then if that confirmation does not come or it changes the price then it needs to be revisited yes. by the board. And that's a written, written confirmation, not verbal. Mm -hmm. Like something in writing that. I love that and appreciate that because I know my teachers very much want it and we're trying to set yeah. up PD before the new school year and so all of that. We want the books in. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. 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 It's great There's nothing worse than starting the school year and you've got mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. flying by the seat of your pants. Yeah. And like Jenny said, the contact on here really should be like a new <laughs> I realize this is a quote, I'm assuming they'll handle oh, an invoice, yes. but make sure, sure it work out. Yeah. I'll ask about the shipping as well. So my motion is to accept McGraw-Hill as the publisher for our new math textbooks pending confirmation that the price quoted includes workbooks, paper workbooks, in hand for every student for six years. Yeah. In writing. In writing. Okay. I second that. Sounds like a plan to me. All those in favor, raise your right hand. We are 620. Moving on. Approval of the dietitian contract. Wait a minute. Yep. Did I miss no. something? Okay. Approval of the dietitian contract for upcoming 2024-2025 school year. And that was uh, another lovely document that um, came from uh, came from the Northern Indiana Educational Services Center and that is um, we are to pay them $5,000 a month for 10 months. Is that correct, or is it just a $5,000? It's just a $5,000. It's, it's for each year, long contract, secured by the school district. Okay, fine. 
5,000, not 50,000, so that makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So this is a long-standing practice. This uh, with NIESC and the food procurement, uh, the dairy and the renewals all coming through NIESC help us with the bulk bidding, the bulk prices that come through. Each school is required to have a school dietitian. Uh, most schools cannot afford or nor do they have their own licensed dietitian. So this is uh, the service center going together and collectively they hire a school dietitian that will review the menus, the nutrient contents, those types of things, correct Wendy? Yes, and, and they also help when we have audits to make sure we're compliant, they'll come in and do mock reviews and anything that we need. So um, just bringing for full disclosure, bringing that to the board in regards to the dietitian contract and food uh, procurements. I think by nature being part of the NIESC service center, these are things that go in hand, but for full disclosure, listing those here for action items. Any questions from the board? Any questions from the gallery? If, uh, if not, I'll uh, accept uh, a motion that we, uh, that we go ahead with the uh, dietitian services through NIESC. So moved. Thank you, Casey. Sorry. Thank you, Mark. All those in favor? Motion carries six to zero. Next, we have the approval of the food procurement dairy. Is that the same? Yeah, it's part of the same thing because yeah. it came up as a separate item. Yeah, that's fine. All right, fine. Shankles. Pair these together. And then the approval of the meal increase for the upcoming 2024 2025 school year. Um, from what I could tell, elementary is going up to $2.85 per meal, and the secondary, uh, middle school and high school, are $2.95 per meal. So it's a 10, per, 10 cent increase uh, just for lunches only. Breakfast will remain the same. Wendy, do you want to share just a little bit about the formula that the state sends, how so those prices are? The state requires we do what's called a paid lunch equity tool, and we are required to do that every year. They have these sent them out that the minimum we can increase, which is 10 cents. They shoot for about 385 right now for our meals for any paid students. So we're about $1.10, $1.20 under, and as of right now, each year they can only ask for a 10 cent increase. Now we could get next year down the road and they say you've got to fully increase, but the minimum we have to take is a 10 cent each year, and anything we're short or over will roll over to the next year. At 10 cents, we don't go any farther in the negative. We, but we had a few years, like during COVID and stuff, that we asked for a waiver that we probably should have been bumping at that time so we didn't get so far behind. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. All right. Um, I would accept a motion that we approve the increase in the uh, lunch program meals. So moved. Thank you, Casey. Sorry. Thank you, Stephen. All those in favor? Motion carried six to zero. Before, before we move on, Wendy, do you mind sharing as we're talking about food prices? There's been a lot of uh, questions around grants and, and um, some schools that have applied for specific grants that eliminate lunch prices for all students. So there is a program called CEP, which is the Community Eligibility Pro Provision. I'm sorry. So this provision started in 2014 to 2015 and we've been looking at it each year. The state gives us a federal reimbursement estimator, and we do have to talk to our nutrition food reps regarding this, and we have to see if we're financially, if we have the financial viability to sustain this. Based on our district right now, for the month that they had us run our calculator on, the food service department would go $17,957.37 into the negative that they would require the district to sign that they would cover each and every month that we were um, short shortcomings as far as what the district can supp supply. They show us if you go out online and look at 41%, we're actually at 45.97%. The number that they're telling us to look for is 62.5% and then they would pay 100% to where the food service department would be able to stand on their own without having to get into the general fund. The other issue with this is we would no longer take free and reduced applications. So that could affect your Title I 
numbers because this number is just going to go off our direct certifications and it wouldn't include any of that. So any child that was needing their direct certificate or their free reduced application filled to like get assistance for um, any testings or anything you would use that full encompass of the direct certifications and the free reduced forms, that, that number would drop down. And based on the number we ran, we were 18% short because we can't force the families to fill up the CEP uh, free and reduced forms because they're already going to qualify under the eligibility program. So we will continually look at it each year, and we have since the program dropped. The only thing was is in this, or October 26th of last year, they dropped the threshold from 40% to 25%, allowing districts with a lower threshold to see if they could stand on their own by taking on this program. Um, but most of the, if you go out, out and look at the website, most of them are running between 75 and 100% where we're at 45, the, the districts that have um, implemented this across their, their corporations. I appreciate the conversation we had as well around that, so thank you. And it's a 1.6% um, that they're looking at. Congress is the only one that can up that number. If Congress changes that number, that totally changes it, but this goes district to district. It's not just a program that everybody can just go change to this provision. Um, it, it literally just depends on what we've got going on in our district. And we look each year, and we will continue to look each year, and if we get that 62.5, we will lock that in for four years, and then we have to reevaluate after that. But it will still affect, if we can't get the parents to come in and fill out those free reduced forms that are considered CEP, um, any numbers that you would have that you traditionally collected up until then. Wow. A lot's going on. <laughs> There's a lot. I mean, we're grateful that you the, the the work that you do. And I, I did talk to my outgoing field rep and my incoming field rep, so I would have two different perspectives and they agree that it's just, it's not viable unless our district has the funds to supply us to keep us afloat. Okay. Thank you very much, Wendy. You're welcome. Next on the agenda is the, uh, are the donations? No. No, what am I losing here? Why am I lost? The policies that you said. Oh, that's the one I tried to do earlier and you wouldn't let me do. Okay, fine. <laughs> policies. Uh, we have 27 policies. Come, I, I know. I got to tell you, that phone call flustered me because I thought something was wrong with Charlie. So, it, but that's my excuse today. Anyway, uh, 27 policies. Has everyone had a chance to read these to the best of your ability? And uh, if not, um, okay. you know, it's kind of like. Just a reminder, it's only the second. I know. And the third reading is in July, and we will vote on it at that time. So if you haven't read them, it's time to do it. All right? So, any questions on the policies? All right, next. Steve. I back you up a little bit. My understanding was there were two different items. Um, you had a, a contract for the dietitian, but then you also needed to approve the dairy and the food program. Well, that's what I asked about. So there are two oh, different documents here. Yeah. There, are two, there are two, and we can, but it all falls under NIESC services that has already been approved. So you're approving a dietitian contract under NIESC, but not approving the yeah, we milk can. and the food. I don't program. know that we needed to approve the dietitian oh, okay. either, but okay. yeah, we can. You're it's okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I move that we approve the uh, <laughs> procurement dairy and POS per one dollar. Thank you. Second. Second. All, all those in favor? Thanks. Thank you. I questioned that. My, I actually questioned it myself, Lauren, and she goes, "No, we don't need to do that." So there you go. I just, I just work here. Okay. okay. So I like the vote on the agenda. No, we have to do this. All right. Asked and answered. There you That's go. Answer, no. Moving on. I believe next <laughs> we have the donations. Any questions about that? Okay, just checking. Uh, the donations for this year, uh, or this month, June 2024, RHS $1,250, purchase of a keyboard for the choir, and that is from Sciota Zai. Please tell all your Sciota Zai friends how much we appreciate that. <laughs> oh, she finally got there. <laughs> Just in time. Yeah. Hello, Betty. 
<laughs> Next we have. Uh, she runs on her own timeline. Like, yeah. <laughs> yes, it's on. T it's it'll be on TV, dude. <laughs> uh, the Keep second donation about. today is for Rochester Community School Corporation, four hundred seventy-one dollars for Kids Bridge Backpack Program from the Gator <coughs> Marshall County Resale. So we appreciate Marshall County and their help with our backpack program. Any questions? If none, then I will accept the motion that we approve both of these um, donations. So moved. Thank you, Ethan. Second. Thank you, Casey. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries, six to zero. <coughs> and uh, next on the agenda is the personnel report. We have uh, at RHS recommendations. Dawn Howard, special education life skills teacher, starting salary at $42,000. Janelle Van Vandepudi, Van thank you for that. Teacher, an art teacher at RHS, and her annual salary will be $44,300. What? Did I miss something? No. Okay. <laughs> CIA positions for 24-25. Chad Thomas, a uh, stipend of $2,500. Laura Friend, stipend of $2,500. Jamie Kirkwood, stipend of $2,500. Cheryl Huff, stipend of $2,500. Jennifer Snyder, also $2,500. Hope Shally, stipend of $2,500. Food services, Lisa Townsend, food service assistant, sub, hourly rate, $14 an hour. Jeanette Pico Lira, food service assistant, sub, hourly rate, $13 per hour. Corporation recommendations. Mary Kay Bernacki, starting wage to be $16.84 per hour per Mrs. Vance. And what is she going to be doing? So she uh, will be at Columbia within the daycare program, but she has uh, the at the last boarding meeting, she was approved at a lower salary. She has years of experience, and she also brings a psychology degree to that program, and we wanted to honor years of experience and the degree that she's bringing. Thank you. Lucas Shane Halls, Director of Special Services, beginning the 24-25 school year with a salary of $89,208.25. You let me know if they short you on that quarter, would you? <laughs> Right. Athletic recommendations. Isaac Schaefer, volunteer coach for RHS Girls Basketball Program. Resignation. Avery Gerwin, RMS music teacher, position effective June 19, 2024. Jen Shank, director of special services, effective August 2, 2024. Betsy Gardner, RMS fifth grade teacher, effective June 30, 2024. That's all I have for that. Any questions or concerns? I would um, recommend we make a motion that um, all the recommendations uh, regarding staffing be approved. So moved. Second. Thank you, Casey and Ethan. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries 60-0. Congratulations, Lucas. Mm -hmm. Do you mind sharing just a little bit about your background and what you're bringing to the table in regards to the director's position? Yeah, um, I, uh, before coming to middle school, I did special education um, at the high school. Before that, it was at Peru, and then before that, it was at Logan's Court. Um, at Logan is where I picked up, back then, used to be called E&L, and now it's called ELL, which is for um, English language learners. Um, worked with that department there, and whenever numbers came in here, helping out um, Jen in that area a little bit, um, with kiddos in the middle school and other, um, especially at the high school. Um, so since 2010, I've been at the high school in, in special ed, and then before going to the middle school, two years down here at the alternative school. I'm excited. Good. I really am. I appreciate the support. Good. All right, Mrs. Jana. So we'll go through um, each of the principal's reports. So Mr. Snyder, if you don't mind starting. Sure. 
Uh, we just completed the obviously the end of the school year, so we had uh, several activities and things that took place. I think one that I'd like to highlight is the uh, Wild About Kindergarten program that we had. I kind of mentioned that we were going to have that, but um, we did have it, and we had a real good turnout. Um, it was very laid back, and I think that it uh, turned out really well. Uh, our kindergarten team does a great job, um, and uh, I, I think it was uh, good for the parents to have an opportunity to come in the building and just kind of hang out, meet the staff, um, see what's going on during an actual school day. And um, so we were, uh, we were glad that that took place. Um, into the school uh, year went really well. And um, currently we are working with our summer reading program um, that we've had going now for, I, th I think maybe seven, six or seven years. Um, and uh, we've got a good group of kids there, a group of teachers that are coming in and working with those kids a couple days. And, and the kid, the feedback that I've gotten is the kids are really enjoying. Um, obviously, it's not an everyday type of a program. It's just a couple days a week. But the kids really enjoy coming in for just a couple hours for a couple days a week. Um, it's not like a normal school day. And um, so they've had pretty good attendance and uh, turnout for that. So we've been, been doing that. Um, our um, the school is hosting the free meals. So uh, we've got... Uh, breakfast and lunch going on uh, every day over at Columbia, so we're open in the morning times. Uh, we've, we've not had uh, a ton of uh, people in the community taking advantage of that, but we've got some regulars that are there every day, and they come in and chat and take their kids down and get them some, some breakfast and lunch, so that's good. And then um, we just finished uh, kind of a, uh, a restructuring in the building a little bit um, where we've gotten all of our kindergarten teachers in the same hallway now. We've got all of our first grade teachers in the same hallway now. And we've got all of our preschool teachers and the daycare in the same hallway. So um, I have to thank my staff for that um, because they worked really hard the two weeks before school was out to prepare for that. And then our summer um, help that's being led by Mrs. Jager came in and uh, had that stuff moved within a day or two. So we were able to get all of those rooms moved and swapped around uh, very early in the summer and uh, credit again to the to the teachers uh, getting those rooms prepped and then her crew doing that so uh, other than that um, we're just continuing every day to get things ready to, to go for next year this is Murphy <coughs> We finished out the year with lots of fun and exciting events, um, memory making events that last week. We had our uh, fifth grade went to South Bend Cubs, sixth grade went to Indiana Beach, and seventh grade had our I Learned Olympics Reward Day. If you were anywhere near the middle school area, you would have seen a fire truck and lots of water coming from lots of different areas. So huge thank you to the Rochester Fire Department. They came and did an amazing job of making the back of our mess feel like a water park and the kids loved it. We had big old slip and slides and they just, they had a blast. So thank you to them for helping us with that. Um, our last day was our PBIS day and we debuted that lift up. If you haven't seen the lift up, highly encourage you to hit that link on our Facebook page. You will see me lip sync rapping and I killed it. <laughs> <laughs> but it was great and when we debut those in the gym at the very end of the day, it's it's crazy emotional. Kids cry. They don't want to leave. They're hugging teachers and each other. And it's just, it's a great, great thing to see. They have a great time with it. And they did great. And kudos to Mr. Wilson for putting that all together and all the work that that takes. He's amazing as well. Now we're just working on scheduling, that master schedule, getting kids in there scheduling. Lucas has done a tremendous job of setting everything up for success. And I do want to take just a second to thank him for everything he's done for the last three years. It's been great. And I look very forward to working with him in a different way. I know he's going to do a great job. Uh, we're cleaning. Ms. Mrs. Yeager and her team, again, did the same thing for us. We have a handful of teachers moving around different rooms, teaching different things next year. They got them all moved. I swear it was in that first week. It was amazing. So kudos to that group for getting that done so teachers can then have the rest of the summer to get put back together and ready to go. That's about it for our months. Questions? Well, at the high school, we educate till 2.45 on the last day of school and gave final <laughs> exams. 
Educate. Um, <laughs> we, uh, we got through graduation. I got a nice new, little new, new gift on my desk. A, it's a little mason jar full of little ducks that the graduates gave me. I appreciate it. Uh, summer school is going off really well. Intercession went well. Uh, made up some credits there. Uh, we actually have a few kids who are getting several free college credits this summer through Ivy Tech, Manchester, and Ball State. We kind of got them everywhere. Uh, Steph and Tara doing a great job. I believe our kids are all scheduled, except for we keep helping Cassie out and making some changes here and there as we do. Um, I think summer sports are off and running. Uh, I know like our girls basketball teams played like 15 games already or something. I know the boys I think have Peru coming in next week. Football went to a Manchester camp. Girls wrestling went to a Manchester camp. Boys wrestling's getting ready to go. Um, we're getting ready to have some youth basketball camps. And I'm sure I forgot. I know the other coaches are doing a, you know, volleyball's off and running and doing a lot. Um, so we got all that going on. So, yeah. Baseball. We had a heck of a run in baseball. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, thanks, thanks Kessler. Kessler. <laughs> yeah, coach good. Yeah. That seems like it was a year ago at this point. Yeah. But it was. It was a fun run. Um, yeah. That two-run homer there was pretty sweet in that first game at semi-state. So, um, regional down at Lafayette, Jeff, at the new stadium down there. If you haven't been to Columbia Park recently and seen that, that is, thing is beautiful. Kids got an opportunity to play there, so that was pretty awesome. And softball and sectionals. Yeah, and softball and sectional. That seems like it's such a long time ago. We're just reading the information. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Questions? Put you on the spot. What are the summer classes that you guys offer? We got English, we got math, we got PE, um, health, and then we got some uh, kids doing some random ones with Mr. Hughes too. Like he's got some math stuff going on. So yeah, with the 2020, and we got one young lady that's knocking it out of the park, and she needed to. So we're proud of her. But since we're talking sports and RTC is here, I definitely want to thank them for broadcasting. Uh, those games. I really wanted to get to Lafayette and uh, couldn't, but I was able to watch it on, on the TV. So thank you to RTC for broadcasting that stuff. It's much appreciated. Thank you, principals and whomever it was who had the idea to have Mrs. Yeager and her team help move. As somebody who's moved classrooms before on my own, it's a Many hands make light work, and so to be able to do that and then have the whole rest of the summer to get set up, that's huge. So thank you to her team for doing that. Big thing I've come out is Kissa needs to get Harmony rolled over as soon as he can. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Let's wait on the state for that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Stephanie had to leave, but she wanted me to thank, um, have you thank Michelle and the crew or moving the swim stuff into the pod. pod. <laughs> we have four locations up for the summer program uh, for feeding. It's the High School, Columbia, Kiwana Library, and the Fulton County Public Library. At the end of July, we'll have um, the middle school open up. This runs through July 26th, breakfast and lunch. We won't be open July 4th and 5th in observance of the holiday. Um, we applied for two grants through the National Dairy Council, one for middle and one for high. The high school was awarded the $2,000 grant, which will be in part an immersion blender, among a few other items that will help us promote the breakfast program. Um, local farm to school, we are going to participate again this year. This will run through August of next year. It's local produce that they supply to us through a grant at no cost to us, anything from turkey to um, hamburger meat to produce, because there's meat in there too. Um, and we start direct certifications. We'll drop July 1st, but they usually don't make it to us till about the end of July. Free reduced applications will be available after July 1st. And the staff will start their training for the upcoming school year. They'll take a course in ethics, in um, civil rights, and alpha versus serve, in, in addition to a few other hours in order to meet the requirements to start the school year. Again, with a, a big shout out to Michelle Yeager's crew, because she has helped out every school, every department in here. And uh, we're actually getting ready to spread some mulch 
at Columbia School on Wednesday morning. So if anybody's bored, 6.30 a.m., <laughs> you're more than welcome to come out and help us. <laughs> Do what? I said I was hoping that you guys would start an early. <laughs> We're going to try to beat the heat. Yep. So... Um, we decided 6.30 on Wednesday we're going to start doing that and then uh, um, the crew's working on summer projects and getting things ready for the next school year. We're just looking forward, I've talked with Megan and she'll be prepared, she'll be working with principals so that at the next um, study session in July We'll have all of our year-end data that we can share with the board and talk to the board about, um, and that will help make decisions as we move into the next academic year. Also spending this Wednesday with all of the principals and, and Scott Kistler and Megan as we uh, make sure that we're on track for the start this fall and we'll bring any of those recommendations or changes or questions back to the board um, at the July study session as well. All right. Last slide. <laughs> We're talking about moving in the inside, so um, yeah, maybe too hot. Yeah. Um, but don't worry. Yeah. Uh, anything else from the group? Board members, do you have anything to share? Gallery. With that, we are adjourned. Thank you all for the lovely evening. <laughs>